Hey, so you trying to make animation loops, huh? And you want a background too? Why? Why is this train so loud? Well, this is the video for you. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's start off with understanding what we're looking at. And that's understanding the composition of all of this. So I want to come over to this file right here and show you the difference between the two. So the original file that you'll see on screen is this image. But if we go over to what it consists of, it's three planes, three different planes. So you have the background, and then you have the train tracks and all of the overlays that come with it. Get rid of that. And then you have the animation. So what you want to do is when you're putting your scene together, you want to double the width of the animation if you can. Now, usually I do this in uh, 4K. So let's see if we double up the size. It would go from 3,800 40 to 7,680 Why? Let's say you have an image that you already uh, like took from somewhere else and you want to use it in your composition. You don't want to draw from scratch. Let's go ahead and show you an example of what you would do with that image. The first thing you want to do is do yourself a favor and adjust the center point of your canvas. So you would come over to view grid and ruler um, bar settings and you want to make it center so now you got the center of your canvas and then you're going to come up to layers and you're going to go down to ruler create a perspective ruler one point perspective i've already done that this is it right here and the reason we're doing that is so you know what is half of your canvas before you start doing all of this extra work right so let's bring the image up that we're using and we're going to find a section that is easily uh, reproducible. So we're going to reproduce this section right here. So let me grab right here. Oh, grab right there. Make sure you click so that perspective ruler don't hurt you. And what we're going to do is copy and paste. Apply mass layer. And let's turn this section off, right? deselect and then let's drag it over here now that we have this dragged over here let's make a duplicate of this and the one under we'll select and drag over to the center now from here all we're going to do is start drawing on the top of this to just make these two images just blend together seamlessly right and after you're done doing all of that drawing you should come away with something like this now after you're done with all of that you just want to duplicate that image and um, put it on the other side use the blending tool to blend out let me turn this ruler off use the blending tool to blend out this line between each other I would either use the blending or the blur tool and now you have your background all put together that is another form of composition in motion I'm a bad boy. okay so when it comes to the next plane it's the train and what I did with the train is basically the same thing with the uh, background but instead of making the ending points exactly the same this is the end of the side of the train and this is the other end of the train I made them different so they connect with each other and the reason I did that is because you got to make it seem like it's multiple trains. I made them all the same color so you don't have to worry about working out, um, you know, where to stop the train and all of that stuff. When you're going into motion tweening, which is the next section, that's the animations. But the point was is to make sure that this looks like multiple trains instead of one train. So in keeping with the theme of animation, we're gonna make this simple. And we're gonna do that by using motion tween. So you see we have the train in this scene, right? Well, you know this tra these train cars are multiple train cars. So it's quite longer. Let me turn off the keyframes real quick. And you should be able to see 
when I do the selection of this, this is the three trains that we were working on, right? And these three trains, what I'm gonna do is basically drag them to a certain section. Matter of fact, let me go back and select again, and then you can see what I ended up doing. So, you see this is the connection that goes into, or the male, this is the male connection that goes straight into what would be considered the female connection, right? And instead of just placing this center, I placed it halfway out of the scene, where that little connection is coming out of the scene. And the reason for that is, I want you to not be able to tell what train is on the screen, and I mean, what train car is on the screen, and what train car is off the screen. So all of these things will look identical, and they'll actually just flip back once it gets to that point. So let's turn the keyframes back on, right? Remember, this is motion tweening. So zoom in. This is the train cars right here. This keyframe is the opening keyframe where we sat this train down in the first place, right? And then we come over here, watch it go slowly. You see that? That is the second car right here. Now you see the starting to see the third car. But what happens is we take the original opening keyframe and place it at the next section of animation, which is the next second. So we're doing one second loops right here. And we want to make it to the point where you can't see it. So by the time we get to here, right? And you see this frame, you see this frame where the train is just about to go out of the scene. When we skip to that next line, it's right back where the opening position was. And that opening position is basically the key frames that we want to run our animation through. So you're going to motion tween straight through. And what I ended up doing is we could have just looped this for one second animation, right? One second loop over and over again. But we want to move that background a little bit more. So we don't want it to be so easy to tell that the background is looping. So the background is a little bit longer, a little bit more detail, and it moves slower. Remember, the further away the animation is, it needs to move slower. It gives it a um, what they call parallaxing uh, uh, effect. So we take this one second loop and just copy it multiple times, multiple times. So let's play it back. And you should see that it just looks like the train is looping. Now it does give a light feel of a chug, 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 but that's not a big deal. The animation is focused on actually the character that's in the animation. Okay, so this section may turn out to be more important than I thought it was gonna be in future animations for everybody. So there's an element in Clip Studio where you can actually go negative on the timeline, right? So you usually start off here at one from zero. But you can actually take this little, um, I wanna say loop or enclosure on the timeline, this little blue tab and drag it negative. And this helps out for timing. So if I were to do this in another way, like, um, Put in the keyframe here. Let's just say I put the keyframe here. Put it here. And I'm gonna take this one, since it's dragged out already, and put it here. And play this from one, from uh, regular one to the regular uh, five. Let's show how it would look. Now it doesn't look bad, but in my eyes, I see that this is going a little bit too fast. Also, the image is slowing down a little bit too slow with the train, making it seem like there's a loop coming. It's like an anticipation of a loop coming. So to make it so that doesn't happen, a lot of times you can do things like go outside of the timeline. So you go negative with the keyframe over here, 
and what it will do, it will help you with your timing for your animation loop, right? So we'll come in now that we've made this adjustment and I can just go back to zero because it's not gonna play what's outside of that time, right? I'm gonna go back to zero and now we play it again. Start from the beginning. It's, it's a little bit slower and it doesn't give the feel of a loop as much as the other one did. Now you still get a, a slight tinge of a loop, but I think that's more of that line that's in the middle. But if you play this continuously, and I also think that was a little, a little bit of my CPU because it's all starting to smooth it out now. But this type of thing that you're, that you're seeing, when you make these type of timing adjustments, it helps you out with your animation a lot. So don't people don't see as much of the cracks in your animation. Now, a lot of people are not as uh, advanced that watch my channel, and I'm not that advanced either. So we kind of push up against the wall, and these tips and tricks and these little shortcuts help you complete a project without having to quit or having to stop in the middle of your project and do a whole bunch of research and learn of different aspects of animation in order to complete that project. These shortcuts will help you complete them, and then later on, you can go ahead and knock that wall out with some more studying and more practice. Okay, so let's bring all of this home. Now that we got the background doing this loopy, loopy thing, right? Let's bring in the character. So we bring in the character right here. And we wanna talk about placement. Placement of the character will enhance the scene or you know take from the scene. So let's be ideal with the placement. Let's think, put him in the middle, right? Everybody thinks, go to the middle. You want to be in the middle of the screen so you can drag the background through. But a lot of times, it makes it seem dull, right? It looks like he's running, you know, nothing special, but it's not enough room to make the uh, person that's looking at this think what's going on ahead of him or what's going on behind him. You just focus straight down the center and it kind of takes away from all the work you did in the background. Nobody wants to take away from the, all the work, the hours they did on their backgrounds and all of that stuff. So this is not really an ideal placement. This is the default go-to a lot of times. But let's bring up these lines here. And I'm bringing up these lines, these ruler lines, to show you usually what the uh, placement should be for your characters in a scene, right? So let's say we take this character and put them right up on this line where they cross at, right? That seems like you're still following the rule of thirds, they would say, for animation. But if I turn these lines off, bring the animation back, I mean, uh, the background back up, and start playing the animation, where are you looking? Most likely you're looking to the back. You're wondering what is coming. What is coming up behind them? Uh, you know, maybe something passes him and you didn't get a chance to see it, so you focus in making sure you don't miss something that passed him. You're not really paying attention to the character. So you wanna be able to pay attention to the character and to the scene. So the ideal place, let's bring this down a little bit. Bring the rulers back up. The ideal place will be here. And let me explain why. Bring the rulers down. Animation back up. Okay, where's the first place you're looking? You're looking ahead of the character. Why are you looking ahead of the character? Because there's so much space, you're thinking, what is coming? That's what your mind is automatically doing. But in the process, you're able to enjoy the background, enjoy the scene with the train going, and really bring the whole scene together in your head. Now, when it comes to the rule of thirds and so on and so forth, that's a whole nother lesson. And I plan to probably go back over a lot of my early tutorials of animation and really bring some more depth to them. Because at the time, I didn't know as much as I do now. I just was kind of explaining the program, right? But this is, these are the types of elements that make your animation better, make it more cohesive. And this is all about composition. We're doing this loop right here. I probably will finish it, do a little bit more work to it so you can see it in its more polished form. But this is how easy it is to do a loop 
one minute loop, two minute loop. It don't matter because you're just going to keep on playing this over and over again. Throw some music in the background and there you have it. Throw that up on your channel. Maybe you make a little make a little money off of it, you know? Well, I think that's enough of this video. If you liked it, please share it with somebody. Maybe they'll learn something from it. And as always, anime life forever.